Tonight on Let It Rip, we're still a ways away from election time, but some believe Detroit's mayor has his eyes on a bigger prize. So who could replace Mike Duggan if he does decide to run for governor? And does the city need to continue his vision or strive for a new one? We're talking to some of the players. But first, polls show a good chunk of Americans aren't thrilled with the idea of this guy or this guy getting the Oval Office next year. Now a new effort in Michigan is trying to get some fresh blood. The polling actually shows that the no labels ticket would draw equally from both the Republican and the Democratic side. That's right, a former Michigan congressman wants to help promote the no labels party. So will this succeed where other third party efforts have failed? Or will it just give us yet another candidate we've never heard of? The debate starts now. Time now to let it rip. We'll get into the third party discussion in a minute. But as you know, we have big news tonight. Former President Trump saying on his Truth Social platform that he's been indicted on federal charges in the classified documents probe. This related to the raid of his Mar-a-Lago home in Florida last year. Now, he says he's been summoned to appear at the federal courthouse in Miami next week. That's going to be on Tuesday at three o'clock. Also proclaiming his innocence on his posts, saying it is a, quote, dark day for the U.S., Turning to our panel now, former state representative Sherry Gay Dagnago, Oakland University political science professor David Dulio, and Republican candidate for president and businessman Perry Johnson, and of course our Fox 2 anchor and resident attorney Charlie Langton here as well. This is a man who never sleeps but always has energy. Uh, we're going to begin with Perry Johnson, one of your opponents in this year's uh, presidential election has been indicted now twice. What does this do for Donald Trump, Perry Johnson? It gives him more publicity. Has there ever been a president that has had more publicity than Donald Trump? In fact, I think he has a slogan, no publicity is bad publicity. <laughs> and you believe that this second indictment, this one, no, not about a relationship or hush money or paying a lawyer off, but rather about a federal law of actually violating the Presidential Records Act. Do you think this is actually just fodder for political play? You don't think this is a serious charge? It might be a serious charge. Anything is a more serious charge than what happened before. Right now, we haven't had a chance to study it. It just came out. In fact, we barely got a chance to even review what's going on. And they'll continue to review it, of course, as we will continue to review it. Dave Dulio, uh, you, man, you do this for a living, talking about politics. Here we are, uh, second time he's indicted. This is a president that, when he ran initially, um, he loved when he said something controversial because CNN and Fox News, everyone would carry the comment. Is this basically more of that? More of the same. This is uh, uh, another example of Donald Trump being the king of earned media, right? He attracts it. He loves it. And most importantly for his political future, he can use it effectively. Sherry Gay Dagnago, he's been playing with fire with a little bit of controversy. He's gotten close to the flame. He hasn't been burned yet, and yet it continues to feed his campaign. This is good for him. Oh, absolutely it is, and um, he thrives off of it. He, he's going to use his social media platform uh, to tell his part of the story uh, and earn and increase his ratings, you know, his polling numbers. Uh, he feels really confident that he's going to get back into uh, the White House, uh, and having this type of free media, earned media, uh, will play right into his hands. But not only play into his hands, play into his base. You know, right now on his social media account, Truth Social, he said, uh, look, this is not just an attack on me. This is an attack on you, the American people, the base. Charlie Langton, you're our attorney around town right now. Everyone wants to talk to an attorney about this. How serious is this? A violation of Presidential Records Act. Can he go to jail for this? I don't know. You can indict anything. You can indict a ham sandwich. That's what they say. So an indictment doesn't mean too much to me. What are the facts over here? But what state was this in? Florida. Uh, who's the governor there? DeSantis. Is he running for president? Yes. Okay, so Trump can take out two people. He can take out DeSantis. He can take out Biden. And uh, listen, Perry Johnson wishes he was indicted to get all this free publicity. <laughs> Give me a break. This is a bonanza for Donald Trump. He's going to use this to rake in the money. Okay, but we understand that obviously he's going to use a little bit of this for his own presidential power play here. But let's be very frank about these charges. And that's why I'm asking you. This is a serious investigation. It's that a document charge. But? He didn't give some documents. But can he be charged with espionage? Can he be charged with uh, the destruction of 
of government property? Aren't those serious well, charges, I, Charlie? I don't want to make light of it. It is an indictment. There was a special prosecutor, a special prosecutor in this case appointed, so obviously they have more information than we do. But the bottom line is, it is still an indictment. He's going to have to be arraigned. He's going to have to go to a court. Trump doesn't like that stuff. But yes, you're supposed, you have to play by the rules. You say he doesn't like that stuff, but the last time he was indicted, he actually put out a release to make sure that the cameras knew what time he was coming. Of course so he, he could did. be president and the jet was landing at a certain time. I think time the Biden administration Back off this stuff. Unless the guy did something. It's a document. If that's a document you're supposed to turn in, he did. I don't know where the harm is, but I seriously doubt that the American public is really harmed because Donald Trump has a few documents. Sh I think the Biden administration is very But Sherry, yeah, but Sherry, Sherry we boxes, know. But we Charlie. know. If you want to talk about boxes, we know that Joe Biden had 1,850 boxes in his Delaware home, in his property, hiding next to his Corvette, all those boxes. And yet we don't have the same fervor from Democrats about why you have those documents. Is that a double standard well, or what? I, well, I think, in all honesty, I think that is a double standard. I mean, you, it, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You can't uh, have a federal charge. And this is a, this is a federal public act uh, that is put into place. And it's, 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 it's a federal charge. And so if you're looking to indict one, certainly we have to look at, you know, you can't throw rocks at, and, and you live in a glass house. That's right. So uh, I think this is really going to uh, really, again, play into Trump's base. It's going to help him raise money. It's going to increase his polling. I mean, you know, he has cult-like followers uh, that are ready to, you know, I mean, attack the White House, you know? So so, so th this right here, um, I'm, I'm afraid for the benefit that it gives him, the advantage that it gives him, uh, and we're real early in the game of the presidential election. The reason we brought all of you here tonight was initially to talk about the fact that there are other candidates outside of Biden and Trump, one of who's sitting right in front of us here, Perry Johnson, who says, hey, give me a shot, too. Uh, is this country sick and tired of these two guys, Biden and Trump? Well, I guarantee they don't want somebody like me in there. Why is that? Well, think about it. I'm a guy you hope they, that's not essentially, the case. <laughs> I'm, I'm essentially a guy that Rudy referred to as the super efficiency expert. I've spent my whole life bringing quality and efficiency to Rudy, companies. Rudy Giuliani, Giuliani. Yeah. called you that. Okay. Uh, two days ago. So you brought efficiency to all of the companies, to some of the autos. That's all right? I do. And then now, what would and you now do? Now I wrote a book, Two Cents to Save America, and the whole concept is quite simple. We have a situation right now where the government wants to spend every penny in their budget. I want to freeze it and cut two cents of every dollar. And that is 180 degrees from what they want. In fact, but, what Harry, they did. But I, ha I have to ask you this. You're running for president against two mammoth candidates. They are. You have all these third party and also Republican Democrats and, you know, who are like trying for this. And there's people at home going, are these guys ever going to, this guy can't make it. I mean, and why are you doing it? So let me ask you, why are you doing it? Well, I do think I can win. And I know that in the beginning, nobody believes it. But I'm going to ask you a simple question. Did anybody really believe that Donald Trump, Clinton, Obama were ever going to be president? In fact, when you take a look at what goes on, the real issue is that the, they're trying to get me off the debate stage because everything depends on the debate stage, right? Well, so you need 40,000 unique donors, uh, right? They, even though I'm funding it myself because they know I have a lot of money, money, even though I'm funding it myself, they said I had to get 40,000 donors. But well, why not go get the 40,000 donors even though you can fund it yourself so that you can be on the debate stage? Just buy them. Well, well, that's a, you, I don't know if you want to do that. That's illegal. <laughs> He's going to be off the debate. That's that is illegal. illegal. Well, well, then he's going to get indicted, Charlie. Well, then he's going to be indicted. I'm going to, I'm going to show you a picture. He has to be indicted. I'm going to show you a picture of a guy who is making a lot of noise, uh, and it's not in Washington, but a lot of people in Washington are talking about him. Dr. Cornell West. He's a Harvard uh, professor. He's a philosopher. He's a brilliant guy. Uh, he's way left, and he says that no president in the Democratic Party, Dave, so far has done justice to black Americans. And yes, Sherry, we want to talk to you about this as well. But as a political uh, science professor, this guy is a third party guy who's coming out saying, hey, give me a shot. Does that hurt Biden and how badly? I, I, in this case, I don't think it hurts Biden. I think uh, Dr. West is so far on the fringe of the, the Democratic Party, the, the, even the progressive movement that um, it's not going to impact the president's run for renomination, and eventually, uh, because I don't think uh, RFK Jr. or other Democrats who are challenging him in the primary have much of a shot either. Joe Biden is running from a position of strength as the incumbent president. Uh, I think he will he will fairly easily. 
defeat uh, all those on the left side of the spectrum. But if you look at some of the numbers, when black voters were polled when, in 2020, hey, what do you think of Biden? 92% of the people polled said, hey, we like this guy. Recently, they asked, hey, are you better off because of Biden? Close to 50% said, yeah. That's a huge hole there. It, it's, it? a, it's a huge hole. I, I think, though, we have to think about um, primary electorate, general electorate. But to your point from before about are, do Americans want somebody new, Americans are desperate for somebody other than Donald Trump or Joe Biden. Poll after poll, survey after survey shows people want new, fresh faces. They want an alternative. But guess what we're poised to give them? Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Sherry, can a third party candidate actually win? You know, unfortunately, what we've seen throughout history uh, is the inability of a third party candidate to, to truly pull it off. Uh, and uh, candidate Perry, uh, in order to get on the stage, not just 40,000 donors, but you're going to have to poll uh, in excess of 15%. Uh, and not many of the candidates are able to do that. Uh, and so Gallup, you know, it's they're. It's 1%. They really slow. 1% is all they need. 1% of the polling, but 40,000 unique donors, right? In I only need 1% in the polling. 1% of the polling. Of the whole country? So, of the whole of country. All voters? But either, either way. 1%. But I guess my question is this. There's, there's people who run thinking they can win. There's people who run thinking they can spoil. We know that when and, George Herbert Walker Bush ran against Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton ended up with 42% of the vote. Ross Perot ended up with 19%. Absolutely. And because of that, mm -hmm. Bill Clinton won. So is that what Dr. Cornell West and these third party people so, are doing? So I don't know. I mean, Cornell West came out early as being one of the, um, he and another talk show host uh, that had a number of issues even with the Obama campaign uh, and the Obama presidency and, and wanted to see Obama do more uh, for black America. Uh, and I think he's had that ax to grind for quite some time. And, and some of it is legitimate. Um, the whole issue of criminal justice for reform, making sure that we truly do address the inadequacy uh, that exist uh, with African Americans that disproportionately are incarcerated. The marijuana charges, the president, President Biden just recently punted it to the states, um, uh, signaling sure. for governors to address that issue. So some of these issues haven't been addressed directly. And Cornell West um, can inadvertently hurt uh, the Democratic candidates. And could hurt Joe Biden. Some, some are saying, Charlie Langton, there's another party called the No Labels Party that's popping up right now. They don't have a guy or a gal that they're putting as their candidate. Uh, people mentioned Joe Manchin may want to take this. But Fred Upton, a uh, former lawmaker from Michigan, says, hey, I'm all for it. it can they have an impact on this he's election? He's going to join that party? Well, he's very much, he's a big supporter well, of that. We we'll always get third party, the Libertarian Party, there's a tax party, there's a Communist Party, there's all kinds of parties. There's a birthday party, party now. Party, yeah, yeah, right. Right. <laughs> I wish party. it was a birthday party. It'd be yeah, a lot easier. Listen, I, no, I think traditionally it's going to be a Democrat and Republican. And I think the, it will. I think the issue is really going to be is someone, they're going to have to be a primary. It's going to be kind of bloody. But you still have to win an election. And you still have to appeal to some people in the center, whether that's 10%, 15%, sure. whatever the numbers are. And so if you're so divisive in, within your own party, I cannot see how that person can win a general election. You've got to be consistent. Perry Johnson, if you end up on the debate stage, if you get the 1% and you get the 40,000 donors and you're standing standing next to Donald Trump and he looks at you and he does one of his wry, uh, comical bits where he makes fun of you the way he makes fun of anyone he stands next to and he calls you peculiar Perry or something like that. How do you respond to I'm, his I'm, answer? I'm looking forward to that. I'm waiting for that day. If he what does that, say means I'm relevant. Now? In fact, he's about the only guy I know uh, who can bankrupt a casino. Think about it. <laughs> now, well, there you go. There's one of the lies you'll hear. You heard it here I, I need him to go to Perry Johnson dot com slash donate for one dollar because that's all i want harry you mentioned uh, bill clinton you mentioned some of the other ones who barack obama became president and people said they didn't have a shot you're hoping for the same shot we thank you for joining us and sharing your ideas thank with you us. dave Dulio, always a pleasure to see you thank you let's do it again and sherry thanks so much for your time thank as you well. for having me on well guess what before we go to break we're giving you the last word on this topic because guess who this guy charlie langton went to the roads to find out what you think just gut reaction. Trump, Biden, what do you think? Neither. There's just too much going on that we need someone new to step up and put the country back in its place. Biden, Trump. No, thank you. I think Trump was doing an excellent job. I think Biden will win. Why do you think they both have to go? One's been in politics too long, and the other one is 
Trump won. Trump won. I got three absentee ballots in the mail. Did you vote three times? Yes. Has Biden been good for the country? He's been okay. He's been done what he can. We've had too much division in this country. There's too many people have lost jobs. I'm hoping that there'll be some other choices when the time comes. I'd love to see some, some, some new ideas and new changes. Not the same old, same old. As spicy as the food is at the cafe, Charlie will find the spiciest of voices to talk to us. Good work there, Charlie. From one election topic to another, could Detroit soon need a new mayor? There are some people who believe that Mayor Mike Duggan has his eyes on a bigger office, maybe the governor's office. So does Detroit need a new vision or just keep going with his? And we asked our next panel about the big breaking story today about former President Trump, Trump being indicted. That debate rolls on next. Back now on Letter Rip, we'll get into the future of Detroit here in just a minute. But if you're just joining us, former President Donald Trump saying on his Truth Social platform that he's been indicted on federal charges in the classified documents probe. This related to the raid of his Mar-a-Lago home last year. Trump says he's been summoned to appear at the federal courthouse in Miami next week. He's proclaiming his innocence. And so we turn to our panel tonight. Detroit News columnist Karen Dumas and Democratic insider and consultant Alexis Wiley. Of course, Charlie Langton with us as well. We thank you all for joining us here, of course, tonight. Uh, let's talk about this. Um, former President Trump back in the news again. Uh, Alexis, this for former President Trump is probably a good thing. A lot of people are saying he wants this press, yes? You know, I, I don't know because at the end of the day, the question is, how does this end for him? And one thing that I just feel like is I see like DeSantis and Mike Pence all jumping in the race. I feel like, not that they knew anything, like I, I would believe that the Justice Department acted with you know integrity. However, I think that there might be a sense that he's gonna go down and that he will not end up being the Republican nominee because he is going to get not just indicted, but convicted and sentenced to priv prison, thus, DeSantis and Pence will really be the ones who will be battling it out for who's going to be the Republican nominee. That's going to be fascinating. And so that's an interesting take because the reason people say, why are Pence and DeSantis wasting their time with this behemoth, amazingly popular character, this larger-than-life mm -hmm. guy, Donald Trump? Karen Dumas' reasons is because they're saying, hey, maybe he won't be here. Well, maybe, maybe not. But, you know, as everything with Donald Trump, you never know how those cards are going to fall. Uh, I mean, it's no secret that both the Democrats and Republicans do not want him to run. And so I expect these things to continue to work their way out to keep him out of uh, out of contention. I do. And Charlie, if you're Ron DeSantis or if you're Mike Pence, how much do you use this indictment against him right right now at this point? I don't think you can. I think Trump's going to use it to get a lot of money. But think about it. If he, if he didn't turn over documents, if that's the crime, so if that means if Donald Trump turns over the documents, there's no indictment? Does he even have the documents? Let's assume he turns them over. Now, where's your indictment, uh, U.S. Attorney? That's a pretty lousy case to me. I want to see more. We just got this. This is brand new. Yep. I want to read it. I want to see it. But documents? Documents? I don't know. Well, we know that Biden also has documents that were mm -hmm. questionable in his Delaware home as well. 1,800 boxes sitting in the current president's home. So this conversation will continue. But we brought you here tonight to talk about something else because, uh, look, you know, we're looking way ahead. But as we always do here at Letter Rip, we talk about things that have happened, are happening, and that could happen. And, yes, there is talk that perhaps Mayor Duggan could end up running for governor. Alexis, I know that you are... So you worked, this is your former boss. I know that you know the governor, you know Mike Duggan. Would it shock you if he ran for governor? You know, I think nothing shocks me. I think that um, there are plenty of people who, dating back to when he decided to run for a second term in Detroit, who were talking about him running for governor. So I know there's a lot of interest there, but I certainly would never speak for him or say what he's, he's going to do. But I know there are a lot of people who are hopeful that he would do that. Would that be good for the state of Michigan if Governor Whitmer left and, and Mayor Duggan stepped in? I, I think that Mayor Duggan, I, I think Governor Whitmer has done an outstanding job. I think Mayor Duggan would be equipped to continue on uh, that great work and continue to expand uh, really the good work happening in Michigan. But I also think that there are going to be a number of other people who enter into the race. Uh, Garland Gilchrist, Lieutenant Governor, a uh, number of other people you're going to see come through and make a case for why they should be the next leader of the state of Michigan. It'll be really interesting to watch. Karen Dumas, you wrote about this in your recent column at the Detroit News. And, uh, you know, you've, you haven't held your tongue back when it comes to criticism of Mayor Duggan. Uh, do you think that he has the popularity and the 
ability to be the governor of the state of Michigan based on his job as mayor. Well, let me say this. Just because I disagree, I don't think that should be interpreted as criticism. And I think in politics, a public person has the right to be disagreed with. Uh, so I don't, you know, everybody wants to interpret that as criticism. Uh, popularity, um, you know, a lot of people wanting him that position, I think that's a stretch. Um, however, he is quite political, politically savvy. Uh, and I do believe, based on the internal conversations that I've been privy to, is that that is the least a viable conversation uh, for him. Uh, he understands politics. Uh, I always say he wrote the, he, you know, he doesn't know the rules. He wrote the book. Uh, so if, in fact, that is something that he wants to do, um, I, I think that, that, that he will do what he has to do to make it happen. Whether that will be good for the state of Michigan, I, that's yet to be seen because I'm not impressed with the work that I've seen from him as mayor. Why not? Well, because I think it has been self-serving. Um, I think that it, you know, he talked about population. He talked about reduced um, auto insurance, I mean, everything that he's talked about promising to do, he's failed to do. He said judge him on those things, and they haven't been done. Uh, we talked about investment in neighborhoods. Yeah, you can go to the No BS News Hour podcast and see we just did a story on that tonight and the proposed split tax proposal, and both of those things are more narrative than they are substance. But, Alexis, you take a look at the blight eradication program that has helped many neighbors in the areas that we've spoken to people we've been out there and then you talk about the lowest unemployment that we've seen in absolutely. in decades are those the like, two things that point to you to, to I, a success point i think that those are absolute success points but i think there are others when you think about really where detroit was before he took took office to where we are today i think that there are a lot of people who will really talk about the investment in neighborhoods um really making sure that blight I know that people say blight, there, there are some I know Karen and, and others mm -hmm. have criticized it, but if you live next to a house that you were terrified would burn down in the middle of the night, or your child was going to walk past a vacant house and potentially have something t terrible happen to them, there are families who have stories to say that that's no longer the case for them. There is still so much work to be done. I think the land value tax plan is something that is very smart for the first time in decades. We're getting at really the heart <laughs> of what's the issue. Well, and Karen, we'll let you respond, and then we'll move forward with that's some of the other fine. candidates that's to right. step that's in. That's no problem. He's, he's done well, it. I mean, the, the, thing, the, the thing about it is, and again, we actually peeled this apart tonight on the podcast. Uh, let, let's take this for example. You've got 90,000 parcels of land in the city of Detroit. 60,000 of those parcels are owned by the land bank, so they're owned by the city of Detroit. 30,000 of them are owned by five entities in the city. When you're talking structures, that tax implication also benefits people like Dan Gilbert, the Illages, the Maroons, the large structural property owners. What's going to happen to the uh, school taxes? What's going to happen to the dollars that are going into our play? I'm saying you've got to look at that, and, and, and this isn't the time to do it, but you those really are, need to peel. Actually, those are non-homesteaded properties. The city is making more from those five no, entities than all I, of them. I, I, I but think but they're residents are the owning them. But, 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 but they're home but ownership. My, but, they're, but, they're, but, they're, but they're not. And all I'm saying is, is that you've got to look past the narrative. If there's one thing that Mike Duggan has done, he has changed the perception of this city. I give them credit for that. But the reality, we did a story on the Pulaski School. There's a drug house across the street. I spoke at a school the other day. I thought I had the wrong address because the school looked as though it should have been closed. So, yeah, there's a we, lot of work to have. be done. And your perception is different. It was completely different when you were on the other side. And I respect Wait, that. But I want to make it very different. clear. When I talk about Detroit, I talk about someone who lives in Detroit I, and experience every day just like you do. I so to try to but you, but minimize I'm not what minimi I'm, I'm not minimizing about Alexis. my experience of what I'm seeing Alexis. is actually just as but bad I dealt with you as what when anyone I was else, in the mayor's well, I think office we, and you I think had a completely we, different approach. And it's very different when your perception is based on your paycheck. I, but, but, I think but, there's but, a lot of bitterness because it was a very there. different time. A very different style, I am, and I think I'm we, not we, we should it, have a but, different conversation. Okay, why don't, why don't we? Why don't we just? We have about 90 seconds left. That's I want to talk to you about this. If, if Mayor Duggan does go run for governor, you have a couple of names that pop up, two of which we've heard before. But mm -hmm. they're dads: Coleman Young Jr. and Dennis Archer Jr. Mm -hmm. Are these two of the names being put out there right now as potentials that could take the spot, Karen? Well, those were t at least two of the names that are uh, included in a poll call that's being taken right now. So, as Alexis indicated, you know that 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 pool is going to grow. It's going to end up being like we just saw, uh, you know, in our congressional seat. There are going to be a lot of people that are going after that, and it's just going to depend on you know how many people are going to vie for that. Are, are we going to end up with somebody that we may or may not want to be in that seat? Alexis, what's it going to take to be the next mayor of the city of Detroit? You know, I think that one. The names we're hearing now, I think the pool is going to get a lot wider. 
I think they're going to be people that, that you would not expect. I think that you're going to see a lot of people vie for this job because it is always, I mean, you're, you're the mayor of one of the, the largest city in the, cities in the country, always watched, the home of the automotive industry. There will be a lot of people who go for it, and I think the polls right Charlie, now. Charlie, this is going to be one of the most sought after times to be the mayor of Detroit, you think? Yes, I do. I think it is. If, if it's an open seat, if Duggan is truly not running, I'm not so sure he's not running. He may want this job. It's a pretty good gig. And he's doing, I think, overall a good job. Well, he's a big fish in a growing pond and one that he's proud of. And I know regardless, regardless of where you stand on how he's doing, some will tell you he's doing a great job. Others will say more needs to be done. With that, we'll be back with Let It Rip right after this. Spirited and important discussion, and for that we want to thank Karen Dumas and Alexis Wiley, and of course Fox 2 anchor and attorney Charlie Langton. That does it for this edition of Let It Rip. Have a good night, everyone.